Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. We are excited to welcome Dr. Sandra Knight, an anti-aging practitioner in Kingston, Jamaica. Welcome. Thank you. Now, we understand that you had the idea of becoming a doctor at a very early age. Uh, can you tell us about that? Very early. I can remember being three years old, and I just wanted to be a doctor. I just wanted to, to get people better, get things better. I started catching insects and rats and stuff and experimenting with them, <laughs> looking on the inside to see what they're made of. And then when I was five years old, this got really cemented because my grandfather died from a heart attack and I was like, I need to cure heart attacks. So that, was, that has been my mission. I mean, I'm not a cardiologist, but I do help hearts, I would like to believe. Where did you go to med school? Cuba, Santa Clara, Cuba. Postgraduate at Emory in Atlanta. And what was your uh, residency in and what was your initial training? Initial training in public health, then emergency medicine. And now I do cosmetic surgery, full circle. So let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, public health. I understand that you served as a program specialist for the Center for Disease Control. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, that was such an intense role. Um, we were in charge of 12 countries in the Caribbean. It had to do with HIV in particular, the prevalence of HIV, combating the spread of HIV, and also chronic non-communicable diseases. And it was challenging because the landscape between the, of the 12 countries were so different. And so it was so challenging to really hone in on each and be able to help them based on their social and cultural context. Right. So I found that very fascinating that health had so much to do with culture and social circumstances and the fact that all of these have to be into these quote unquote what persons might consider non medical stuff has to be integrated in the way we see people's health. So that was that was an, uh, an immense eye opener for me, and I was always fascinated with the interaction, the energy play between human beings, and that energy play comes very easily when you look at a population and how disease spread within that population. So that was a very fascinating experience for me. So uh, tell us about your practice today then. Oh, I do an integrated cosmetic surgery and regenerative medicine practice. Um, it is located in Kingston. We do a lot of body sculpting, facelifts, Botox fillers, everything that the cosmetic surgeon does. And, I, and then, because of A4M, I've been able to integrate a lot of regenerative medicine, primarily to speed up healing after surgeries and to prepare the chronically ill so that they can have maximum results and they can remain stable in terms of their vitals and their general um, health status, remain healthy enough for procedures and after procedures. So I found that immensely useful in terms of serving my patients and having them have better outcomes. Uh, when did you get introduced to A4M? I got introduced to A4M about six years ago by a colleague who had been to a fellowship here. Mm -hmm. And she said, you have to go. She said, and I'm like, okay, I'm going. So I've done, I've done multiple fellowships and, and I have not regretted not one minute of it. Yeah. Fascinating. And it's an interesting organization as well. It is. Because it's got such a diverse membership. It's not just all osteopaths or cardiologists. Yes. And it also gives you an opportunity to network with other yes. like-minded physicians as well. Oh, that is an amazing thing. Yeah. The networking that I have been able to tap into. And, and most of the presenters are practicing healthcare givers. So they not only bring academia, 
to our fellowship, but they also bring experience, which is, which is, I mean, you can't pay for that, really. So it, it's, all, it's always a good experience. So we're here at AFRAM LA. Uh, what courses are you taking here? I'm doing the Peptide Fellowship, oh. one and two. Very fascinating, lovely, wonderful. I've learned a lot. The information is, is extensive. The, the science behind it is solid. And they do give a lot of science behind what they do, which is what I like. You know, you're not only telling me, okay, do this, but why are we doing this? Right. How does it help the cell? How does it help your body? How does it heal? What are we trying to address? What is the physiology behind this? And, and I love that. I love that because then I can understand and I can actually go back and sort of integrate what I've learned with what they have shown me in the physiology so I can, you know, I can be able to better put together protocols, etc. Sure. So I, I like that. Right. So actually for people who aren't that familiar with what peptides are, could you give us a little 101 on peptides? Sure. Well, most peptides are actually naturally produced in the body. Peptides are substances, um, just like amino acids and other type of compounds that are actually produced in the body. Some are not, a few are not. And what happens is that they are responsible for the proper functioning of cells in terms of your mitochondria, your nucleus, cell, the, 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 how the cell remains intact. So, of course, you know we age due to cell death right apoptosis and these peptides are able to slow down that process one uh, reverse signaling for cell death two and in so doing can reverse many disease conditions that we cannot reverse with contemporary medicine so it's very fascinating we saw some videos today of of, of testimonials of clients and it, it, it's really amazing i can't wait to start um, and so the way that you would want to use peptides in your practice? Speedy recovery. So my practice is a, is, is a huge practice, um, a lot of clients. I want to get them out of my stable quickly after procedures. So I want rapid healing to get them to a comfort level where they feel good enough to get up, mobilized, etc., cetera, et cetera. So, And also I have chronically ill that I do procedures for that I need to stabilize first before I get them into surgery. So I just want to mix all of that so that the patient can benefit and can heal faster and actually come to me and be better, you know, get better even from an illness that may have plagued them before. Right. So it's, 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 I'm happy. I'm happy to start. And what about PRP? PRP, PRF for cosmetics, stem cells. I do stem cells also, right. um, PDO threads, um, Myers. Um, like my version of <laughs> Myers, vitamin therapy, IV vitamin therapy, mineral replacement. Um, I do a lot of IV therapy. I do a lot of IV therapy, which not only supports my patient that are going through procedures, but other patients that come just to um, um, fight fatigue, fight illness, fight stress, anxiety. So I do a lot of that for my patients. So it sounds like it's a wellness practice in addition yes. to an aesthetic practice. Very important, very important. It's very important because that aesthetic part is just one part of that human being. And so I try to address multiple parts at the same time so that they can understand that their general wellness is important to me, not just a bigger butt. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, right. Well, we're thrilled that you're here, and, and thank you so much for thank taking you. the time. Thank you. Of course, of course. Anytime. Mm -hmm.